Taylor Jenkins Reid, Cassandra Clare, and Philippa Gregory. These are the authors who almost had their work used to train AI. Imagine this. A major tech company almost bought one of the biggest publishers in the world to train its AI systems. Sounds like the plot out of a sci-fi novel, right? Well, it's true, and today I'm sharing that story and exploring what that could mean for authors, publishers, and readers like us. Picture this. It's 2023 and you're on a call with managers, lawyers, and engineers at Meta, the company that owns Facebook and Instagram. The topic of the call? How far behind Meta is in its AI systems, especially compared to OpenAI and Google. The problem? Meta doesn't have enough data. In fact, it has run out. And people don't post enough on Facebook anymore for them to scrub that data as much as it likes. Boo. So what are they going to do about it? Meta's vice president of generative AI told executives that his team had used almost every available English language book, essay, poem, and news article on the internet to develop a model. But all of this was free use stuff. Kind of. And they needed more. They debated paying $10 a book for the full licensing rights to new titles. They also talked about how they had summarised books, essays, and other works from the internet without permission, and discussed doing it more, even if that meant facing lawsuits. Finally, they discussed buying Simon & Schuster, one of the biggest publishing houses in the world. Simon & Schuster, who publishes more than 2,000 titles annually. On the call, one lawyer warned of ethical concerns surrounding taking intellectual property from artists, but was met with silence. While this call didn't end in a real plan of action, supposedly, it's safe to say Meta is looking to do whatever it can to get ahead. What's worse and potentially quite scary is that this meeting wasn't meant to be heard or talked about by the general public, it was leaked to the New York Times. In 2020, Paramount Global, the parent company of Simon & Schuster, announced its intention to sell the publisher, but after a planned merger with Penguin Random House was blocked by US courts, and honestly for good reason, Simon & Schuster was eventually sold to private equity firm in August of 2023. These calls were recorded between March and April, right around the time Simon & Schuster was being sold. We can see this as a close call because while nothing went ahead and some would say it's unlikely that Meta would go through with the deal or that the publishers would accept the deal, it doesn't mean that if Meta really wanted it, they wouldn't go down without a fight. Especially when Meta's chief AI scientist, Yann LeCun, said that only a small number of book authors make significant money from book sales. This seems to suggest that most books should be freely available for download. The lost revenue for authors would be small and the benefit to society large by comparison. Yikes. Let's just say they don't have any problem with using creative work as they see fit. Meta's interest in Simon & Schuster wasn't just a shot in the dark. They saw a vast potential for Simon & Schuster's catalogue of books to be used to train their human language models in their AI systems. And this isn't the first time that a huge tech giant has used books for its own purposes. In fact, Google has been scanning books for years in its Google Books project. Google Books is a service launched in 2004 that searches the full text of books and magazines that Google has scanned, converted to text, and stored in its digital database. Results from Google Books show up in both the universal Google search and dedicated Google Books search website. Google Books allows users to view full pages from books, in which the search terms appear if the book is out of copyright or if the copyright owner has given permission. If Google believes the book is still under copyright, a user sees snippets of text around queried search terms. But let's be real, they've scanned the entire book and they have it in their system. About a year after launch and after some serious criticism from the American Association of Publishers and the Author Guild, Google announced an opt-out policy. Let's just say this was a way for Google to scan whatever they wanted, unless you told them, no. The sheer scale of the Google Books project is massive. It includes deals with libraries and academic institutions around the world to give them access to all of these books. Even publishers are giving them permission to scan at will. So are they using these books to help build their AI language models? Well, not right now that we know of anyway. Google may have already run into issues with Google Books, but there's no talk saying that they're using it to train their AI language models yet. 
Let's just say that it could happen, because just like Meta, Google is running out of data to train their AI. If it's resorting to using users' Google documents and YouTube video transcripts to train their systems, I really don't think they're above using books too. So let's say we move into a world where authors' books are being used to train AI language models, and let's be real, we already are. What does this mean for authors? Picture this. A major tech company has created AI that's been trained on the works of best-selling authors. Suddenly, this AI starts producing stories that mimic the unique style or narrative elements of a specific author. This blurs the lines of copyright ownership, creating a problem where authors' rights are trampled due to innovation and progress. Think of AI as a rogue artist, shamelessly copying the distinctive styles of established writers and flooding the market with knockoffs. It's creative theft on an industrial scale, reducing unique work to templates for AI replication. Authors could see their work diluted, their styles cloned, and all without a penny, a word of acknowledgement, or credit at all coming their way. And this doesn't stop at creating books with AI. When an author's work is used to inform AI, that language model can be used for any number of things. This means that an author's voice, style, and techniques could be used to develop AI applications in completely unrelated fields. Everything from crafting persuasive marketing content to programming chatbots, or even generating political propaganda. Yeah, I went there. Authors traditionally control how their work is used in different applications, whether it's educational material, adaptations, or anything else. If their work is absorbed into AI, this control completely evaporates. If this happens, this work can be used indefinitely, creating profits for the tech companies indefinitely, and absolutely nothing for the artist that created the work in the first place. The legal system is completely unprepared for this, leaving authors to fend for themselves. Current copyright laws offer little protection against AI's capabilities to replicate and redistribute their work. For authors, this means fighting a huge force, a tech-powered behemoth armed with deep pockets and legal teams ready to stretch the boundaries of copyright definitions. Ugh. Guys, I can only apologize. This video is a little uncertain. While there's work in place to regulate AI, it's really reactive and slow stuff that mostly focuses on global safety rather than creative work. Of course, writers' guilds across the world are still fighting and will continue to fight for better regulation on copyright and AI. But there's a lot of work to do. As readers, our best bet is to support authors and call out AI in the publishing industry when we see it. So what do you think? How do you feel about books being used in this way to train AI systems? Or are you just unbothered by the whole thing? I would love to know, so leave me a comment, and I will see you next time for another video.